and welcome to Baking with the Braziers. Today we're making pumpkin sugar cookies. <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> but they can be used for Thanksgiving too. Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thanksgiving isn't scary. Okay. Or Dia de los Muertos. <laughs> these, have, yeah, these have real pumpkin in them. Mm. And um, pumpkin is a really wet ingredient. So I saw online that somebody used, um, took the pumpkin and cooked it for a little while to kind of reduce it down and get rid of some of the moisture. Mm. Um, it's kind of a good ingredient to bake with when you're making quick breads, like pumpkin bread. And it's really wonderful, but you don't want it to be too wet in cookies. So I put this over... Um, high heat, and I cooked it for a while, like 15 minutes, and that's two cans of um, pumpkin. So, no spices in it or anything, just pumpkin. And then this is four sticks of butter. This is Ooh. gonna make quite a lot of sugar cookies, but um, I was making them for all of the youth, and so, at our church, and um, so I needed a you lot needed of You needed a lot. Yeah. And it made so many, so I adapted a sugar cookie recipe that I like, and this made even more, um, probably a dozen more cookies. It normally makes 48. I think this made 60 cookies. It depends on the size of the... Sugar and... Yeah, so normally sugar cookies use just white sugar, and I put in two cups of white sugar, and then I added a half a cup of brown sugar, because... You know, pumpkin and brown sugar. I didn't want Fall to add Fall is brown. Two... We already talked about yes. this. Yes, everything I've been doing is brown. Um, I didn't want to add too much brown sugar because, again, it's a really wet ingredient. And you want cookies to not be wet. What? Yeah, that is hot what? pumpkin that I what? just threw in there. And How'd you get it hot? Well, because I took it off the stove. Oh, that makes sense. And so I really did reduce down two cans of pumpkin and it ended up having two cups of pumpkin total. Still looks a little sticky. Yeah, it was probably not the smartest of th thing of me to put it in there hot, um, but I figured my butter was cold, and this recipe is not gonna use any eggs, so I didn't have to worry about it being too warm for the eggs. Um, the reason why it has no eggs is because that pumpkin is in place of the eggs. It's nature's eggs. And then I had buttermilk in the fridge, so I did three quarters of a cup of buttermilk and one quarter cup of maple syrup. Ooh. Because I really wanted it to be... I tried this recipe as a chocolate chip cookie recipe first, and I think we all decided it wasn't quite sweet enough. And so I wanted to add more um, sweetness to it, and I think the maple syrup did that. And then I'm adding to maple syrup my... feels very fallish yes, too. It, it goes does. with the it totally does. So then this is eight cups of flour, and I just added two tablespoons of pumpkin pie spice, mm. and then a teaspoon of baking soda and a teaspoon of baking powder, and a half a teaspoon of salt. Because you gotta keep that salt in there. And yeah, I use salted good. butter. I think I already told you guys this in my other videos. I always use salted butter. Um, unless there's a really good reason not to. Unless it's croissants. Oui. And then because it's an enriched dough and it's so much butter, they do because taste really salty so much, if yeah, you use salted oui. butter. So, And I just mixed those dry ingredients together a little bit before I threw them in the mixer. And again, this is sped up. So I was on a lower speed than it looks like. Um, but I put in eight cups of flour and I stopped a little bit just to make sure I wasn't making it too dry, and I definitely wasn't, because I needed to add more flour to this. Um, and I will when I dump it out. So I needed in probably another cup or two, really. This makes a lot of sugar cookies. Nice. And so I added probably another cup maybe even two of flour, and kneaded it in. I'm trying really hard not to overwork the dough because I don't want it to be bread. No. You know, I just want some nice sugar cookies, and um, I just 
I don't want it to be too flowery and too dry. And I had to knead it enough to get the seams out of it. When you knead um, sugar cookie dough, you don't want those flowery seams in the... Well, it seems like you did a good job. <laughs> um, I also, so I cut these into pumpkin shapes. Orbs. Totally fitting, right? And um, when I cut sugar cookies, I try to lift up the cookie. That's Peter. Um, I try to lift up the cookie and stick my hand underneath it as I pull the, um, the cutter away. And these worked great. So I stuck those in a 325 degree oven for 10 to 11 minutes. They really don't get a lot of color on them. I like them to be really soft. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm making some icing while those are baking. And I'm trying to make a cream cheese icing that's a little bit softer. I didn't want to do brown butter cream cheese again because I keep throwing brown butter on everything and I don't want anyone to get sick of it. So this is just... Impossible. Um, yeah. This was a, a stick and a half of butter and eight ounces of cream cheese. And I, because I looked at all those 60 cookies and I was like, I'm going to need to have a lot. And I was way wrong. Because of the way that I iced them, I did not need this much. So I would do, you know, maybe half a stick of, or maybe one, no, let's say three quarters of a stick of butter and four ounces of cream cheese and three cups of powdered sugar and don't put as much milk in as I did. I think I ended up putting like a whole cup of milk in and that was the stupidest thing ever because <laughs> I ended up having to keep throwing in more sugar and more sugar and I was like, this is so dumb. We had to eat icing for days. It was- We still have icing. Not that bad. This. It was delicious. But um, I don't know what I was thinking. I wasn't sure how I was gonna decorate them. I wasn't sure if I was gonna put the icing like spread the icing on each cookie. And if you do that, the icing doesn't go as far. Like it uses a lot more icing. Um, I also decided that I wanted to color the icing. I don't know that it needed it, but, um, and I try not to use food coloring on everything if I can get away with it, but I don't know. Halloween is the one time when you can yeah. get away with it. I just wanted them to be fun and, and so I, that's just some red gel food coloring and orange. I don't use um, liquid food coloring for anything. So um, get yourself some good gel food coloring. Mm. Or natural food coloring is also really cool. Powdered um, food coloring is really fun, but no liquid. It just changes the consistency of what you're baking. So this is me, it's not very thick. And I just couldn't keep adding any more powdered sugar to it because I didn't want to make any more. I was like, I'm done. Throwing it in the bag. And, uh, well, and then I figured I would... Yeah, I'm throwing it in a mm -hmm. big Ziploc bag. I really don't like spending extra money on piping bags. And then I it's decided the at first to pipe a swirl. And I just piped a swirl on it. These are going to go into the freezer because I knew that I might need to stack them. Um, for transportation purposes. Um, I don't think we did end up stacking them, though. Almost. I think we left them flat. Um, and then I tried a swirl with kind of maybe more of a pumpkin shape for this. I thought I'd show you that I tried some different things. And that's really all I did. And you know what? These say, stay soft for days. They're so good. They're actually I, um, really good out of the freezer, too, because you can still kind of chew on them and... Yeah. Rawr. Or cold from the refrigerator. Anyway, this was so much fun to bake <laughs> sugar cookies. <laughs> Thanks for baking with the braziers. Bye.